Man, oh man. 2020 has been a record year for inflation. Gas has gone up. Food has gone up. Rent has gone up. Real estate has gone up. And I don't think that this trend is going to end in 2022. But there is a new wrinkle in the mix. 30-year mortgages are almost 7%. With the expected rate hikes that we're going to see this year, we're going to have mortgages at 10%. Do you understand the last time that we had mortgage interest rates at 10%? was 1990 1990 the mortgage interest rate was like 10.23 10.23 percent 1990 so what we can see is a circular pattern or you can call it a cycle Mortgage rates went down, real estate went down, real estate went up, real estate went crashed. But we're going to see 10% interest rates this year. Now, are we going to see everyone literally hop out of the home buying process? Nope, it's not going to happen. Even at 10% we will still have people buying houses now from a long range perspective it's not a bad bet because if you buy a house and you, you keep it long term you can recoup your money easily now one of the reasons that foreclosures is going bananas is because these people have no home equity none so they're falling their heads are on the chopping block for the foreclosure situation but yeah we're going to see 10 percent home interest rates and what is this is going to do first of all the number of people who are in the mortgage industry is going to dramatically drop the number of people that we have creating mortgages, doing refinance. Yeah, all that's going to stop. Home mortgage refinancing is going to stop. As these interest rates continue to climb, you're going to see that the singular mortgage activity will be new home purchases. You might have someone who has a house that has a ton of equity that they want to pull out that they may do a cash out refi but for the short duration the game is up you know people would buy a house and then two years later refinance at a lower mortgage rate that's that's over for a while now it's going to come back because it's a cycle it's a cycle where we have mortgage rates and i remember years and years ago i used to work in the emergency room and we had some people who were in the mortgage industry um get hired on in the hospital because they got laid off so this this boom and bust cycle it really just depends upon where you're positioned on how you're going to manage but for the average person and let me go ahead and give you the roadmap for the average person with no money a bad credit score you're not buying a house in this upcoming environment what's going to happen once these interest rates get to 10 percent you're going to see a lot of people in the mortgage businesses get laid off and what you're going to see is the slowdown of the flipping business. Right now, it's pretty hard to find a property and flip it for a property. 
in this 10% interest rate environment, because this isn't just going to affect the primary mortgage market. No, 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 no. This is going to affect all money sources. Hard money, and correct me if I'm wrong, but hard money was already at 10, 12, 15%. Because this was supposed to be a short-term loan. Well, guess what? Hard money loans are going to be 25% and 30%. And this is going to, what's going to happen is it's going to consolidate the game. Right now, and I've talked about this before, why do we have this mortgage home, this, this mortgage home buyer? Well, let, let, let me say it again. Let me say it correctly. Why do we have rising rental rates? Why do we have short inventory in home prices and home supply? It is the individual real estate investor. There is a multitude of YouTube channels, me, Kevin, Bigger Pockets, uh, the real estate rookie who are inducing people to buy real estate. And it is put the chumps down on the supply. And even though mortgage interest rates are going to go up to 10%, home rental rates are not going to go down. They may stabilize, but they're not going to plunge. They may slow down, but they're not going to plunge. Rental rates are going to continue to go up. Inflation is going to continue to go up. We're going to continue to have these situations of very, very hard numbers to work when it comes to real estate. And everybody wants to be a real estate investor. Uh, there's a new YouTube commercial talking about people getting into multifamily. Now, for those who have capital, once again, if you're a first time home buyer with a bad credit score and no cash, you're not going to be able to play in this market. If you are an investor with a bad credit score and no cash, you will not be able to play in this market. And, you know, everyone wants to do um, wholesaling, which is finding a distressed property and flipping it to someone who will pay you more money than you bought the property from the homeowner. I feel that wholesaling activity is going to dramatically slow down. And I'm going to tell you why. Number one, inventory supply. The number of people who have a home that is paid for, more and more people are becoming educated. And what these people are going to do is take out the middleman. They're going to sell the house themselves to someone and flip it. So wholesaling in this environment is going to become very, very, very challenging because the consumer is becoming educated just like everyone is becoming educated about real estate. There is a number of YouTube channels. There is a number of podcasts. There's a number of books. There's so much information. So real estate, except for the extremely well healed, is going to be a hard game for people to play. Because even if you are an experienced real estate flipper, let's just say like right now, a lot of experienced seasoned real estate flippers are just sitting on the sidelines waiting for a buying opportunity waiting for the market to soften and even those guys are going to struggle they're going to struggle because this is a not a new animal we've been here before we've been into 10 percent interest rates the country's been there i remember when i was a kid interest rates were like 14 15 percent but see that house with that 14, 15% interest rate didn't cost, it was about the same price of what you would pay for an Escalade today or even cheaper. 
So even though the interest rate was high, the purchase price was low. So what we're going to see is a fight between high interest rates and high home prices. That is something that's just not going to be able to exist in the same environment. You cannot have these extraordinary high home prices and these extraordinarily high financing interest rates at the same time. Some's got to give. And what I feel is the interest rates will continue to go up. But I feel that the number of people who are participating in the mortgage situation of buying a house and financing a house is going to be dramatically reduced, which poses a problem for the Fed because the Fed operates on mortgage backed securities. So just go ahead and keep your eye out on the market for the next 24 months. Run 1.7 million building permits were pulled this year. So we're going to have these high interest rates. We're going to have this low inventory. We're going to have a bunch of people who are in mortgage trouble. And then we're going to have a bunch of new inventory coming on the market. It's going to be interesting. Once again, for those who do their homework, for those who are willing to do the hard work, there will be opportunity. There will be a lot of opportunity. But for the casual real estate investor who's looking to do something simple, easy, not so much. Not so much. Because this climate is going to predate the recession. And who knows what's going to happen with all of this? Will the Fed continue to raise interest rates during the recession? I haven't done any research on that, so I really can't say. Will, but I, I can tell you, people will continue to buy houses regardless of the environment, regardless of the environment. People will continue to invest in real estate regardless of the environments. It's just the number of people who can play that game is just going to be reduced. It's just going to be reduced. And we're going to see some people from all of this disruption become extraordinarily rich. Because see, this isn't a short-term game. This is a long-term game. There are people who positioned themselves with real estate 10 years ago who are going to be able to take advantage of this upcoming situation. Because this is one of the big issues that I consistently see on YouTube. Everyone is trying to do it in a few weeks or a few months. And to really come out on top of this, you had to be in the game for a minute. You had to be playing the game. And this is going to be really, really pivotal is for you to understand your market. The home price inflation did not impact all markets equally. Uh, these corporate buyers only buying houses in a few markets, like 10 or 12, I think. So there are plenty of of markets that you can still buy a house at affordable price. But here's the problem. These are markets that no one wants to live in. These are places that people don't want to be in. So we will see. But mark my words. We will see 10% interest rates in the year of 2022. And then... I think all hell is going to break loose in 2023. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.